I'm Brittany. And I'm Rick. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Life, Life in the North, North 40. 40. On today's video, we're going to show you my 72 hour two person bug out bag. Let's take a gander at it on her backside. This is a little bit larger bag. Um, this is very comprehensive. If you haven't seen our 10 C's of survival preparedness, watch that video because this bag is packed specifically using that criteria. A lot of these items are a little larger, they're very cost effective, and they're easy to use for the novice. This is a larger bag and it has a ton of great pockets. It's a tactical style bag, but this is specifically for my wife and multi-person. This is a little bit larger bug out bag than mine. Uh, in the military, we use the 20% ratio. Your kit complete should be no more than about 20% of your individual body weight. This is just a little over for my wife, 20% of her body weight at 35 pounds. Um, so you'll see why this is the weight it is and the size it is here in a minute. So I normally put this in my car when I go anywhere and then I can just take it out when I get back home. That way in case I need it from leaving my house, I can grab it. So this is a bug out bag, not a bug in bag. There's hundreds of videos on YouTube about bug out bags. So Rick's gonna explain what the difference is and why this is a bug out bag that is good for me. Thanks, Han. So a bug out bag is something that you can grab and go. If someone's chasing you with nefarious intentions, you can grab this bag and you have everything you need to survive, escape and evade for 72 hours. Typical bug out bag definition. A bug in bag is the exact opposite. You're going to a hide site, a hold up position, um, and maybe even your own house from somewhere you're fleeing and holding up. So that's somewhere you're gonna stay static. This is a bag to move with to do what I said earlier. All right, let's get into it. Let me take you through my bag. This is a 511 Tactical Rush 72 and it's 55 liter capacity. I'm gonna start off with talking about my straps. This is for easy access. I have a Coughlin keychain on here. It has a compass, a whistle, a magnifying glass that comes out and then it also has a thermometer on the back. And then over here on my other strap, I just have an easy little flashlight. It's an LED bite light. And then in the underneath the straps on this back zipper is where I have my maps. I'm just ha I have two maps here just to show you different styles that you can have for video purposes. I have a big atlas of my state. All right, obviously this is a very large map. You won't fit this atlas in a few of your bug out bags, but I put this one in for this video just because it's a entire map of our state. It's more comprehensive if you're covering a bigger area of operations. And then this is more of a map style you probably will have in your car, just a little pamphlet. You guys will probably use a more central localized area map of the area that you live in. And like this one, this one's a forest service map, so it shows a lot of terrain around our specific area in our state. On this first outside pocket, I have my knife. It is a Moroccanive Garbrook full tang five inch stainless steel blade, full tang. So the stainless steel runs all the way through the handle. It's a great survival knife. And then on the very outside of this molly or the netting webbing on the backpack, we have some zip ties. I have various sizes of the zip ties um, throughout my bug out bag for a different reason. It could be for equipment repair or securing items. Inside this pocket is my Stanley cook set. And we did a video on our bug out bag cook set. So you should watch that video if you want to see how these work. And I use Esbit fuel tabs to get this to boil my water. And then also in this pocket, I have an 11 inch plastic trowel. This is obviously for digging. You can dig a hole to hide your excrement if you're escaping or evading. And then also you can use it for a solar still to collect water from the ground. So on the other pocket, you see here, I also have these zip ties at the various sizes. And then I have this Mountaineer screw lock carabiner, and this has a 25 kilonewton strength. So you can use this for pulleys with ropes or any kind of cordage, but also I like to be able to use it on a handle to be able to hang my bag or hang other equipment that you may have. Inside this pocket, I have my life water, water bottle, and so this straw filters the water. This is awesome um, compared to having other water filtration systems because you can literally scoop water up like out of a river that's not potable and it will filter it as you drink it. And it also comes with a little snap link. 
And then I also have my two liter platypus bags. This is great for when you're held up and you actually have time to collect a larger amount of water. You can boil in this bag actually, but this is great for cooking to put into your other containers uh, to stockpile up on water. And then there's a ranger band, rubber band, that helps it roll up and keep in place. And this ranger band can also be used for tinder. There's a lot of redundancy in this backpack and that's one of them right there. And this top zipper is an accessory pouch. I have just right now my polarized Oakley sunglasses. You can put other various items that are easy access in here, like if you have keys or a wallet or a phone. I just have my sunglasses in there for now. And this top front pouch, I have my Army Lensatic compass attached with a dummy cord. This way I can carry it and I won't accidentally drop and lose it. Then a mask just in case, some hygiene wipes, and then I have my headlamp in here and this also has a red cover lens that way I don't give my location away if I am being followed and then also a white light. Now we're going to go through this front pouch of the bag. There's a lot of stuff in here as you can see. We're going to start with this netted side. First we have some hygiene items. These aren't in the 10 C's but we consider hygiene it's a subject of its own. These are towels actually and they grow up to be 12 inches by 24 inches when they just get lightly moist and they are wickable, washable, you can use them to wipe your sweat off or to dry off if you're coming out of the water. Two of them because this is a two person bag. We have electrical tape which is under the cargo tape category. This is obviously used, you can do repairs, tape things together, hold things together. Then this emergency thermal blanket is for signaling. There's a silver side and then the yellow side helps you retain body heat. It is 52 inches by 82 inches and look how small it folds up, it's awesome. Then we have some fat wood. This is for kindling for your fires and they have a ranger rubber band around them to hold them together and the rubber band can also be used for tinder. And then I have this hand saw. It's a silky gomboy medium tooth and then it's 10 inch long. It's a handsaw used for cutting. This actually burns less calories than it does to cut with like a hatchet or something. And then it just has this little release lever and you fold it back down and it folds up nicely like that. Okay, and then moving on, we here we have a lot of utensil handheld items. Then here I have a three in one utensil. It is a spoon, a fork, and then a little serration down here and the knife. Obviously mechanical pencils, these are good because you don't have to sharpen them. And a Sharpie marker. I have this handheld knife sharpener. Then there's the through night archer flashlight. To turn it on, you press this button down here. And then this little silver button adjusts the dimness and brightness. And then you have to press this bottom button again to turn it all the way off. And it's nice, it has this little clip right here so you can clip it onto your pants or you, and it also has this so you can wrap it around your wrist so it doesn't fall off. Then we have Kim lights here for obviously under the candling category and out of the 10 C's of survivability. We like to write the expiration dates on here so we know when to replace them out of our bag. We like to be thorough in our bag so we don't forget what's gonna expire. And then out of the cutting category is this Leatherman Super Tool. For our Leathermans or any kind of multi-tool, you want three main important items, actually four. You want pliers, you want a knife, and a saw. Then you want a file that's good for wood and metal. This also has many other tools, but those are the main ones you wanna look for. And then we have this all-weather notepad. This on the outside has bobby pins, paper clips, and a spring clip. These bobby pins and paper clips can be fashioned to be used into tools. Handcuff keys, a lock pick, and you can even sharpen them for different types of tools. So on the inside, taped to the cover, we have a repair needle. Obviously this is good to repair equipment. There's a big hole at the bottom to put any kind of thread or cordage through. And maybe as a last case resort, you can suture yourself. You see that is a ginormous needle. 
And then this paper, the all weatherproof paper is amazing. You can literally write on this paper while it's raining and while it's wet, but only with pencil. You can use this with certain types of pens, but you can't use it with Sharpie. If it's already wet, it will just smear. And one of my favorite comfort items in this pack is hand warmers. These are the super warmers. They are last up to about 18 hours and these do expire so you have to make sure that you check the expiration date. As you can see, they expire of October of 23. Toe warmers, these are five hours and they are smaller, just little pads that can go in your shoe. And then we have the hand warmers that are eight hours. And this top netted pouch we have um, items of combustion these are storm proof matches and i'll just show you a little bit they do have tinder in the lid so you can start your fire easily and then we have a fierce serum rod with striker and cordage so this striker is right here on the end or this side you have a wrench and bottle opener you have a 1 to 100,000 map scale and then you have a ruler on this side and then we have a tiny survival guide that folds up into a wallet size. It fits into your pocket. It has a ton of information about food, navigation, self-defense, hunting. And then also fire shelter, water, um, and danger and first aid prevention. This tiny survival guide could be life-saving. And then also in here we have a tiny survival card. It is a 17 tool survival kit with knife. And these are magnets that this metal sits on. There's a knife here, um, fish hooks, there's a little tweezer set if you want. To see this in more detail, check out that 10 C's of survival preparedness video. Then we have our fire starting tin. This has a lot of our combustion and fire starting items in it. First, we have some five Tinder Quick tabs. These two super matches that Rick made. Then we have a magnesium block with ferrous cerium rod and striker. Some wet fire starting Tinder. And then we have a signal mirror in this container. It just fit in here, it's not a combustion item. Two super matches. You go super matches that Rick made. Um, they are super matches wrapped in a cotton pad dipped in paraffin wax. So they are highly flammable. Then we have 10 trick relighting birthday candles. And then you see this is a Titan Yuko match. We have four of these in these super matches. Underneath the painter tape, there's two makeup pads wrapped around it with the paraffin wax. We can show you a video of how to make these. Then we have a Fresnel magnifying lens for magnification and starting fire. Here is to start fires with solar rays. And that's it. It's nice to have all your fire items in one area. And this container isn't completely waterproof, but it will keep them dry. And as you see, we, can, we have a ton of redundancy in here. And then in this last pocket, I have a charger. So this is a solar charger, a radio, a flashlight. And this is the button for the flashlight. And you can adjust it to zoom in or to zoom out. It is all powered by a lithium ion internal battery right here, but you can also put AAA batteries in to run this. So if we just turn on this radio. And the Harlem Globetrotters invite you to sign up in the Coyote Country Club. And it also has a weather band channel. Then you have this antenna to help for the radio. And then here is where you plug it in to charge it or you can plug in your cell phone charger with this USB port. And then this little one chart plugs in to be able to charge the unit itself into the wall. Then it is also cool, so it either can run by solar, the lithium ion battery, or your own hand crank. And then this very front, I have easy access items. I can just easily unbuckle this. Can't see. And I have first aid kit, hatchet, and my poncho. So this hatchet, it's a one and a quarter pounder. You can obviously use this to split firewood. You can use it as a weapon. I also carry my Glock 43. And then this side can be used as a hammer so you don't have to use a rock to hammer anything in. 
This poncho I keep on the outside since it is waterproof. I have ranger bands around this, but you can also um, secure it with bungee cords since this, you'll probably use bungee cords to secure this over your, your shelter. Um, it's super easy to also throw over yourself if you're in inclement weather. And then I have this backpacker first aid kit. Originally it's REI, but we also bolstered it up with a lot of extra items in it. Okay, so over here, we just have some medicine, Tylenol, naproxen, safety pins. These safety pins are used in combination with this wrap to be able to do like a sling and other options. We'll show you a cool video of how to do things. It has like a head wrap, a knee wrap, a front chest wrap, and a sling. Then we have a syringe here for irrigation, lip balm with um, SPF in it so your lips don't burn. We just have tape, a nail, a tourniquet, all sorts of scissors, tweezers. Obviously you can see bandages and ace wraps, cotton swab. Insect repellent's really important to put in a first aid kit. Normal band-aids. Moleskin helps with those blisters, alcohol wipes to clean some wounds. And then also we have other medications here. We have, I think this is Imodium, which is anti-diarrheal. Um, Pepto for your upset stomach and diarrheal. Benadryl obviously for any allergic reactions. And then um, we have knuckle band-aids. Just behind here, there are gloves and a first aid manual. And then we have a SAM splint. 36 inch behind here. So if you can see this helps with um, like broken bones. Now I've opened my bag and we're gonna talk about cover. So we have my Army Woodland Poncho cover that was on the outside. Like I said, this is waterproof. So I'm going to use this to sleep under. And then this Army Woodland Gore-Tex Bivy. This is to sleep on. Technically, you can sleep in this too, and if you're even a little bit wet, the Gore-Tex will help wick away your moisture. And as you can see, I have this wrapped in Army Camel bungees. I have six of them total between this and my... And this is the Army ACU Poncho Liner. This is what I'm going to sleep in. And it's also wrapped in the bungee cords. I have six bungee cords total. That's because you need six of them to actually do it like an apex with the poncho cover to keep you warm and dry if it's raining. As you can see, it was wrapped in this trash bag. We have two three mil thick trash bags behind the maps in the back of our backpack, but this is just another one to keep the poncho liner dry. And this can also be used to obviously carry things around um, it's waterproof it's flammable so it's just a good another item to have and then in this pouch down here I have gloves hat and a shema gloves obviously to keep your hands from being torn up a shema if you want to see more details on this check out our 10 C's of survival preparedness video go more in depth but pretty much this can be used obviously for covering and even for a filter system for water and then I have a boonie cap keep um, the sun off my face and some of my shoulders especially if you're in a desert weather area is there's nothing worse than getting sunburned in this top netted bag I have a lot of portage and then a some tent steaks and a special box full of goodies. Okay, first here I have some normal 550 paracord, 50 yards of it. And then this cord is Titan paracord. Its tensile strength is 770 pounds. The 550 cord is 550 pounds of tinsel strings. That's why it's named like that. Um, this also has a ranger band over it. So this one has three additional lines in this than the normal paracord. It has a fishing line, a waxed hemp wick, which is good for fire starting, and then also a um, wire in here, which is good for snares and traps. I have aluminum tent stakes. These are seven inches and they have a little cord around them. This is good for when you don't have any trees or foliage to help set up your poncho hooch um, covering or if you really want to get your poncho really low and close to the ground. This is good to help get it there that way you can stay warmer if you do have like a warming candle in there or something like that. So these come in handy. 
All right, in this plastic container, we have a lot of specialty items. First item I'm gonna to talk to you about is this full-size big lighter. It is prepped for better survivability, and if you wanna see our video, it's called Upgrading Our Big Lighter for Survival. Um, it's a really cool video, you should check it out. So here's a razor blade, obviously under the cutting category. You can even split a stick and lash it to the stick, and you can create a spear out of it. Then we have some dental floss. Dental floss, as you saw, we had that needle in our weatherproof rain pad. This is great to be able to suture. We don't have normal thread because this is multi-use and multi-purpose. You can use it for tying things, suturing, repairing clothing items, and other equipment. This is 55 yards and it's coated with wax. You can also use it for tinder for fire. Then we have rubber bands. We have these mini chem lights, which are good for 10 hours of light. We have backup batteries in this case. We have three triple A's and then two double A's. The lithium, they're, even though they're a little bit more expensive, they last a lot longer. These are backup batteries for our headlamp and then for a through night flashlight. Then under here, we just have a little lens cleaning cloth, a measuring tape, mini Sharpie. And then you can see this bright orange tape. It's engineer marking tape. It's good if you want to mark a place for either you to remember or for somebody to meet up with you. And it's really good for marking um, kind of like a crumb trail. That way you know your way to get back to a certain area. And then in here is just a kind of some miscellaneous items. There's pencils, safety pins. You can see that there's different size safety pins in here. Nails, these nails are a great idea for being able to hang up bags or anything in your bug out bag and you can use the other side of the hatchet, the hammer side, to nail that into a tree. Then we have this wet fire tinder. This is good to even start fires in inclement weather. Super glue, which for obvious reasons, it's good for wounds, it's good for repairs, and same with this wire. This is about 40 feet of steel trip wire, and this is good to set booby trap or to secure and repair items as well, and for traps and snares. Okay, that's that box. This is the food pouch of the bag. This is one of the reasons why it looks kind of bulky. So like we said before, this is a two person 72 hour bug out bag. So there's enough meals in here to last two people three days, but really probably a lot longer because we all know we don't need three meals a day to survive. So the reason why we like these mountain house meals is that first off, you don't need another container to eat out of. All it does is take hot water to be able to make the meal. These bags are resealable. What's also really great about resealable, you know this is an E&E &E bag, so you're escaping and evading. So if you have boiled your hot water, you have your food ready to go, you're in the middle of eating and you have to escape, you can reseal this bag back up and eat your food later. Then. The shelf life on these is also at, usually at least 30 years, so you don't really ever have to buy more meals if you already have them in your bag. There are other food options, but this is what I decided to have in my bag. And then I just use my Pathfinder cook set and Esbit tabs to boil my water for these meals. And then I just have the three-in-one utensil to be able to eat, and then we can just share the utensil if needed. All right, so we only have two pouches left. This last one also has some nutrition in it. These are the Starbucks Via Instant Coffees. These are great because all you need is hot water. They come in different flavors. They have a little bit of sweetness in them already because it has like the creamer um, and sugar in it. So it's a great instant coffee. They come in different flavors. Let's see, there's mocha, mocha. Okay, I only have mocha, but they do come in like vanilla and other things. And then another important thing to have is what we call lickies and chewies. These don't obviously have much nutritional value to them, but it's really good to have some instant sugar for blood sugar, and really mentally, it's great to be able to suck on something when you're really suffering. So we have a whole bag of these. Some of them look a little bit melted, but they stay good for who knows how long. All right, the last pouch of my bug out bag has various items. One of them is another water filtration system. It's Sawyer brand. It's a small filtration system and it has this squeezable bag and this filter. So this filter has threading on the inside of it and you attach it to this, where this cap is, you take the top off. There's an arrow on here so you know which direction the water is flowing. So once this is attached, you can squeeze the water through this bag 
the non-potable water and then it will come out this end potable so you can drink it. You can also attach a straw to this end to, to drink directly out of it if you don't have a container to put your water into. Then it also does come with this syringe to help clean the filtration system. Another item in here are these Esbit fuel tabs. If you want to see how these work, we had our bug out cook set competition and I use these Esbit fuel tabs to boil my water and they work super well. One tab burns for 12, up to 12 minutes. It burns up to like 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's basically odorless. It also leaves very little residue. It doesn't melt when it burns. It kind of just burns up. Okay, and then another candling item are these beeswax candles. These have a 12 hour burn time. I'll take one out for you. And if you're in an enclosed space, like a car, if your car's broken down, you light this, it can heat your car up 20 degrees. And you can also even use these to read by candlelight. You can put one of those candles into a lantern like this. So there's a candle inside here. Then you can hang it up, you can hang it inside your poncho hooch, in your tent, or you can even just set it on the ground. All right, the last item in my bug out bag is Gorilla Tape. Now this is 1.88 inches wide, it's 35 yards, and it's part of the cargo tape category of the 10 C's of survival preparedness. You can obviously use this for so many things. This has almost a 21 pound tinsel strength. It's good, you can obviously do repairs with it, you can even tape up wounds, and it's highly flammable, so you can use it as tender even, so. All right, you guys, that concludes my bug out bag. Remember, it was a 72 hour two person bug out bag. But we just wanna mention a couple additional items that you may need. Some of the other items you may wanna consider in this bug out bag, you see this is a pretty good sized bag already, pretty comprehensive. You may want some important documents, obviously a passport if needed, some extra cash, um, any IDs that you think are important, a solar charger, which we do have uh, to charge any electronic devices might be a good idea. If you have your device goes down or whatever and you have to use a burner phone or somebody else's phone, pay phones are a thing in the past, you may want to have a phone number list, um, email list. So something else that we didn't have in here that may be a good idea, you may want to have a change of socks, an extra pair of underwear, a t-shirt, something like that. Or depending on the time of year and your environment, some type of snivel gear, fleece, sweatshirt, um, wicking stuff like yeah. that. You saw earlier in the video we had a couple map options. Obviously you could have a smaller map. You can have a map specific to your area. Kind of an important deal when there is no more electronics, no more Google Earth, no more navigator on your phone. Be watching for our next video which is going to be my 72 yeah. hour gray man elite bug out bag. It's uh, not as big as this. Some more elite items, a little more compact, and it does not look tactical, but it's got a lot of good items in it. That will be our next video. Yeah. Also, one more thing I wanted to add, make sure you always have your weapon on you. I carry my gun on me, and then also have extra magazines in your bug out bag. Good idea. Brittany did a great job on her bug out bag. It was very detailed. We hope it helps you with your bug out bag. And if you're interested in any of the products that were in our bug out bag, Make a comment below or shoot us an email at lifeinthenorth40 at protonmail.com and we will send you links to those products. Thanks for watching our video, you guys. If you like this one, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See, See you, you next time. time.